Welcome to this episode of The Gunman. This is part four of a four part video that I've made on this VESS uh, Commodore Ute. It's painted in poison ivy green. Paint coat is 746S. I'm using Standox solvent based base coat on this job and Standox Crystal Clear Pro with HS hardener in it for clear coat. So, prep work's all been done. I'll uh, rub that bar down with a piece of 800, but in the other videos I've uh, taken, it takes, takes you right through every step of how, to, how I've done to get this car painted. The only thing I've missed out is polishing, because I personally don't polish cars very often. We've got a detailer out the back that'll do the cut and polishing for us, so um, I try to get them pretty clean off the gun most of the time anyway, so I only really need just a couple of D nibs. And I'll take you through the best ways to get them nice and clean. So what I'm doing here, this is actually an uh, anti-static uh, degreaser, de um, which I'm wiping down the bumper bar with. So it gets rid of the, any static that you may have from the plastic parts. They wipe on, then wipe off. And now I'm doing the, uh, the car, with that's the wax and grease remover, or prep sole. Um, so I'm using a solvent-based one, because I'm using solvent-based paint. If you're using water-based paint, there's obviously different uh, cleaners that you're going to have to use, uh, pre-paint. So, um, yeah, just wipe on and wipe off. So, uh, you'll take note of um, when I'm wiping them down, I do the blends first because I do dry sanding. There's still a little amount of dust left on the panel before you prep sole it. Um, I've found that uh, I've done, done it both ways. Like some people uh, that um, I used to prep sole or uh, wax and grease before I mask it and then do it again after I mask it. But I ended up finding out that the results are exactly the same so you're just putting an extra it's just an extra time wasting thing when if you prep solve it before you mask it up so I've just found it's not necessary this this ends up cleaning it cleaning all that dust out of the panel um because uh, because the liquid will uh, actually drag all the dust out of the, the scratches as you can see already it's, it's much cleaner than what it was before so um it's up to you you can do what you want really but this is just the way I do it and it gets the results so um, yeah, well, I'm welcome to give it a shot if you want. Um, but yeah, obviously, just wiping it down, and you've got to make sure you wipe it until it's completely dry, or else you can be left with a film. We will be running over that with a uh, tack cloth and high air pressure at, this, uh, at the same time after it's all been prep sold down. So, as I said, just doing the, doing the blends first up. So this video, it's 26 minutes, so I think is my longest video so far. And from the feedback I have been getting, you guys actually don't mind the longer videos. Uh, some of you say, no, I like it, and keep them relatively unedited. So that's pretty much what I've been doing in the last few videos. Just um, It gives you more of an idea of exactly how I do the job, uh, rather than just, um, just spray painting and clear coat and base coat and stuff like that. So it gives you an idea of you know the tools that I'm going to go and grab up in the corner and, all that kind of stuff so uh, same thing more than welcome to leave your your um, feedback and comments and any questions I'll do my best to answer I'm a very pretty busy man so you won't always be able to get back to you straight away but um, any serious questions I'll uh, do my best to get back to you um, so yeah just uh, now I've got those blends done I'll be going over the prime sections so because uh, the, there's primer there, that um, that will actually end up turning the rag slightly grey because the, the colour grey is inside the scratches. So that's the reason I don't go over the, uh, the primed areas first So because you can end up wiping that. See that? You can even see it on that rag, a slight bit of grey. And you can end up wiping that grey over your blend area, which is only the clears going there. So you can end up with that underneath your clear. So. Um, this is, yeah, I'm just running over the whole car with a high pressure air blower. Um, I used to do this a long time ago and then I stopped doing it and I was just using the air gun. I was getting good results for a while, but then I started to notice a couple of my jobs had a few, few too many bits of dust in it, so I decided, all right, how, what, how was I doing it when I was getting really good results? And this is one thing that came to mind. Another thing that came to mind was that I used to take all my um, all my paint into the booth uh, before I started painting. You'd warm it up because it's starting to cool down as well now. So that's another thing that helps out in the winter. You can see I've got my clear coat and everything set up in the corner of the booth ready to go. So I don't have to leave the booth. So that's, that's going to uh, stop from some dust landing in there too. Um, you see that what I did with the high pressure air blower back then, I actually repeated that three times over the whole car. I left the footage out. 
um, it was the first couple of times I did it, but um, yeah, it, it helps um, uh, get cleaner jobs, especially these plastic bumper bars, they can end up with uh, little bits of fluff and fur because they do static up, so you just blow them right off and use their anti-static degrader like I used at the start. And this is just some plastic primer, so we're just using the cheaper brand. It does the job, but you can see it dries up really quickly, so I like to give it what we call a double header, which is just two two coats, one straight after another, go over all the edges and that, make sure it's um, yeah, it's going to stick. Um, I've seen some guys forget to put plastic primer down, and it's a really hard, hard to fix job, because you've got to try and get all the plastic out of all the insides and all the corners and that. So, um, yeah, make sure um, you... Give them a bit of a rub down. Like you, some people don't uh, scotchy or don't uh, sand their bumper bars down, but I've been through stages that I have and that I haven't. I've found you're better off if you do sand them down because you know, if it comes back in six months and the paint's flaking off, well, you can turn around and say, hey, look, I used a plastic primer. <laughs> I also sanded it down. I've done everything I can do. If it's not sticking, then it's not my fault, you know. So, it's just uh, one of those things, you know. If, if, they're, if the uh, paint's flaking up and it's not sanded underneath, well, what are they going to say? They said you haven't done your prep work properly. So, yeah, it's just one of those things that you're better off. It only takes a couple of minutes to do. So, yeah, as I said, I'm doing just a double header on this. And I think there's about 17 minutes of footage we've got here, um, unedited, totally unedited. It's exactly how I've done it, exactly how I've done this car. It's actually a really nice colour, this one, uh, Poison Ivy Green. It's the, the, I've done another car this colour um, and it's my video with the one of the most views um, I think partly just because it's a real nice colour so um, yeah unfortunately last time I did this same colour uh, I missed out on my second coat of clear because of the camera uh, I think the batteries died on that camera so I've, since then I've replaced my camera I've got a GoPro, I've bought a head mount so this is um, this video you're watching from I've got a head mount um, so I think it's pretty pretty good footage. Most of it, it's uh, up up and up close, and um, yeah, rather than just being on the tripod, which you can see there, some people do. But um, last time I ended up missing out on the second coat of clear, and this time for some reason this GoPro has actually been playing up on me, and I've actually since uh, replaced it. I've now got a new one. Uh, it it was losing footage. It was corrupting hard drives and stuff like that. So um, yeah, I ended up skipping out on the uh, first coat of clear so forgive, uh, forgive me for that one but we've still got all the base coat and the second coat of clear so what I'm doing here is being that uh, greens pretty much across the board uh, most greens most reds uh, silvers sort of 50 50 they do and they don't cover depending uh, but um, what, what paint system you're using but, but most greens they really don't cover too well in solvent base uh, from what I hear uh, water base is a lot better, but um, yeah, they the the red, what I'm doing here is I'm actually um, covering up the blend panels, and I'm going to use what we call a ground coat, which is just um just a bit of green, uh, just to put down over the the prime sections and the new panels, um, so that we can we've got basic coverage before we start putting our top coat color on. This uh, color, as I said, it's a really nice color, and it's got lots of pearls in it. Um, I ended up mixing up uh, 650 mils of colour and um, if I hadn't have put this ground coat down I would have had to have mixed up easily more than a litre, uh, probably about 1.2 because it, it doesn't cover so well. So I ended up just um, having a look up on the bench and this ground coat that you're going to see me putting down first actually was a blue because um, I didn't have any green that was close to this. So I found a blue and then I just grabbed some lemon yellow tinter and dumped a dumped a bit of that lemon yellow in and it will turn the uh, green into blue, uh, sorry, the blue into green. So yellow and blue makes green, so um, that's what I ended up doing and this is my ground coat I've got in the, in the gun now, so it's also good to get those um, bumper bars which are black uh, covered up before you start painting and especially on a colour like this. Um, if I was painting the car black obviously I wouldn't worry about using a ground coat uh, because you, you'd get coverage after two coats anyway. But I'm just spraying this ground coat down. You can see it's starting to get pretty good coverage already because uh, yeah, it's, it's the ground coat. I left it a little bit thicker than what I usually would have. So I think it ends up that I um, put five coats of colour all up. So it was 
two coats of this ground coat and three coats of the top coat. So this, uh, this, when I was mixing this colour up, it's actually got um, lots of mixing clear in it because of all the pearls. It's, it, I think it was 750 mils I went to mix up initially, and in that it had 250 mils of clear base coat. And I thought to myself, well, if I put all that clear base coat in, I'm not going to get any coverage. It, grains already don't cover good enough as it is. Um, so I decided to leave out 100 mils of that uh, clear base coat, and the colour was still perfect. Um, it still looked really good. I didn't even have to colour match it. So um, yeah, if if you're mixing up colours like this, maybe you can do stuff like that. Like I've been doing it for long enough to know what you can and can't do, and th all that. That it's it's a base coat stabiliser, but it still it still does its job when there's they've just doubled up. Sometimes it makes me wonder: do they just do it so that we use more of their paint? You know. Um, I don't know, they could, they may, may they may decide that it, they think it needs it in there, but I don't think it does, so you're not going to lose any adhesion or anything, so, and the colour still looks fine, so you get the results doing it that way, so. I decided to put two coats over, as I said, that's drying straight up pretty much, you know, like, all I did was put the, the first coat on, by the time I've come back around, that's right to go straight over with my second coat, going on a touch wetter now. Just drying it off with the with the air gun, as you can see there. So what what I was actually doing there was um, I think there was a little uh, silicon hole. Uh, that's what I was actually uh, spotting in that section for a little section of uh, silicon where you can get say people use tire black and stuff like that, which uh, you know, has silicon inside the product. It can end up creating little fish eyes and sections and stuff like that. So. What I was actually trying to fix there. If you dust dust a couple of coats on, dry it out, and then put a couple of dust coats on, you can actually end up uh, getting that getting rid of the, those little silicon holes. If you get to them um, in the base coat, once you've got them in the clear, then uh, yeah, it's pretty hard work to get rid of them. You're just gonna have to just keep clearing and then uh, dab, like just grab a touch-up brush at the very end while it's, while the car is actually still hot um, from the bake, um, and you put a bit of rocket or racing additive into your clear coat dab them in straight away. Um, if you leave them overnight, sometimes you can, um, you'll have to sand it because uh, it's actually, the paint's dried up too much and when you go to sand uh, tungsten it out, it will actually pull out. So you bet, you're better off doing it straight away as soon as it's in the booth and then it'll dry out and it'll also stick because the paint's still fresh so, with those little silicon holes. So your second coat over the bumper bar is pretty important to get it over the, over the black bumper bar because you see some guys they um they get the bars outside and it's just black compared to the car and even though they've painted the the whole front end and they've painted the bar as well but they haven't just got coverage over the black bumper bar so yeah I see that quite often actually some guys do that so yeah now I'm just um unmasking that you can see it's actually pretty close like it's not the perfect color but I just um found as I said it was just a bit of blue put a touch of yellow into it. Got it somewhere, you know, half closed. So now we've, we've got basic coverage and before we even put our uh, top coat colour on and that was just some blue that was sitting around. So it, it uses up some old paint and, um, yeah, it saves the boss a couple of dollars. So if it was my workshop, I'd be doing the same thing. I'd like to think that my workers uh, think about, you know, the, the cost of materials too, so. Just unmasking that. It's taken a little bit longer to dry because I've already got a coat of base coat underneath it. So next up we'll plug our top coat colour in. Just about ready to go on to with our next coat. I've got the spray booth turned up to, I think it was about 25, 28 degrees. So straight away you can see it already starting to look covered. From memory I ended up still putting a couple more color, coats of colour over the top because it wouldn't be 100% cover, but it looks like it. Could get it out in the sun and find the bonnet and the fender's different colour. So, so yeah, if you haven't already uh, checked out my Facebook page, um, you should check it out. There's a link in the comments box of all my videos to my Facebook page. I post photos up there every couple of days of, uh, of my car, which I've transferred into a race car. I've done some custom paint work on that. 
Um, also, just some some car some photos of the cars that I paint and that. So I also post all the links to all these YouTube vids up there. So keep track of all my work that way too, if you want. So. It was just a little scratch there on that door, which I decided to fill up with a bit of fine filler, so we'll put a bit of colour over that too. Just blending into this door here. So, um, being that it's a darker colour, I'm not going to use any blending clear over that door. If it was like a metallic or a light, light, light colour, I'd use some blending clear, because sometimes you can add some patchy areas over the blends, but dark colours you generally won't get it so there's no use in putting it there. It can be done if, if you want to like it's like there's a, another guy that I work with he does it over there like just everything rule of thumb he puts the blending clear over every every blend but um yeah I found it's not necessary. He says that he likes to do it because it, it looks like a coat of clear it'll give you a bit of a shine for a second so sometimes like he says you miss a fingerprint you can get a fingerprint under your clear so that'll actually just give you a second chance and you can say oh yeah there there's a little spot i'll have to spot a bit of base coat color over that so if you want to do that it's entirely up to you so i'm pretty happy with how it's covering up now but trust me this color uh doesn't cover well it's, it's not covered yet although it looks covered because we put that ground coat down so it served its job perfectly Yeah, just medium wet coat. So I'm using the Devilvis GDI Pro on this. You don't, uh, for your base coat, if you're getting runs in your base coat, you're putting it way too heavy. There's no way, like, you, basically I don't think I've ever had a run in my base coat. And that's in my whole career, so. Um, uh, fluid wound up to about three turns. Um, uh, open the fan up full throttle. And um, pressure at about two bar. It's pretty standard uh, setting for for a spray gun. I find it pretty easy to transition between spray guns actually. I always used to just use the GDI Pros on all my jobs but uh, after I started doing uh, the Gunman and started making some videos I noticed other guys they, they don't want to just see the same gun all the time and that's fair enough. Not everyone uses the same gun so I started changing it up using some of the other guys guns and uh, yeah, using some sardas and the eye waters and stuff and I found um, they're actually yeah better than what I always used to think they were when I never used them. Uh, if you play around with the settings, I find the Sarda Jet RP probably uh, very difficult to use compared to the Devilvis and Eye Water. Uh, but if you know how to use them, you can still get some pretty good results with them. I just did a respray in it um, yeah, with the RP recently, and it came out pretty good. Respray on a Pathfinder, which I've got the footage of, so I'll be uploading that soonish too so keep an eye out for that one i found that with those starters you've, you've got to um wind the fluid in a little bit more and um yeah excuse me about that that's a bit gross <laughs> um no you gotta do what you gotta do um so yeah here we go with our second coat of base coat color i think there might have been something caught up in the in the nozzle there so gave it a bit of a clean up that can happen because I had the colour sitting in the gun for a while. I colour matched it and yeah, a, bit of, a bit must have dried up on the top of the tip. So we've got it spraying nice again anyway, so there's a few bits it's uh obviously it's come out of focus. Apologies about that, but I think most of it overall it's um it's pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. It's still probably an improvement on just sitting in the corner on the tripod I think. Let me know what you think as well. Like most of my videos are like this these days as my subscribers and the guys that watch all my videos probably already know that but um yeah I'd, I'd, I'm interested to see what you guys think of it. You know like there's a little bit here that it's sort of a little bit out of focus. Um you know I think but overall it's not too bad and even me coming back and watching this I can say okay so when I'm doing bonnets maybe I need to adjust the camera up a bit but being that it's on my head I, I'm not really to know until I come back home and I put it on the computer I don't really know what I've recorded so it's just uh, yeah, do, doing my best obviously to, to get the best footage so yeah this is our second coat and we'll do one more after this, and we're starting to do our blend on our second coat, clear. 
Oh, I'm sorry, I have color. If you see me adjusting my pressures sort of halfway through when I'm painting, that's just a simple reason that our um, compressor is just an old one. Uh, it's a good compressor, but it's just it's not the air screw type. It's not the new type of compressor, which you basically don't get any air fluctuations. So it's a pretty decent sized workshop. We've got uh, about five of us in the paint shop, detailer out the back, about five or six panel beaters, so about 15 workers all up. When the, the next guy in the spray booth next door is using, he's trying to spray the two painters out there, trying to sand down their panels with their sanders. You've got the, de uh, the detailer at the back on his mini buff using the air power and a couple of panel beaters with their air grinders and hacksaws. It, it pretty soon takes up the air, so I'll get just some slight fluctuations in the booth, but it can still be adjusted for. You can raise and lower your pressure and e even just uh, adjust the way that you're painting. You know, you can, you can get uh, very uh, exactly the same paint finish with totally different settings so you start lowering the pressure down you can just hold the gun in a little bit closer and go a bit quicker so it, 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 unfortunately I did miss out on that first coat of clear so I do apologize about that but this is that GoPro I was telling you about the older one it, I think it started getting corrupted and yeah so this is the second coat of clear you get most of it and for some reason I think it, it cut out halfway through doing the bumper bar again so yeah so I, just, I decided to use the uh, GTI Pro with the T2 air cap on it, which is a Transtech cap. Um, it just started actually, I was doing an aeroplane, had to go and help a mate spray an aeroplane one day a couple of weeks ago, and um, we, because he had the T2 air cap on, and I thought, well, we want to get the same finish, so I better change over to the T2, and also you don't want to get too much material on an aeroplane because you don't want to get too many runs, and you don't have the heat as you do inside the spray booth so um yeah and i was really happy with the, the finish that i got on that plane and then i've ended up um doing a few other videos with this and i've been real happy with what i was uh, the results i was getting so i've been using the t2 a little bit more lately so and i found best settings uh for the t2 is not full uh full fluid uh on this one uh especially not in the colder months which it is here at the moment uh if it's in the middle of summer you need to just smash it on quick you, you might want to wind the fluid out because you need to get the get a bit more fluid onto the panel um but yeah when it's cooling down over here it's probably only about uh 25 degrees in the booth but uh exterior outside pre uh temperature would be about uh yeah 20 degrees so the the panel's still quite cold, a little bit cold, so, so um, for the bonnet, we'll, we'll set it to about, uh, you can set it to about four bonnet roof and boot, and then you can also wind it in to about three winds out for the um, side panels if you want, which is what I did on my car, I did, I re-spread my car, as I was saying before, and I just slightly adjusted the settings for the bonnet roof and boot, then all of the flat panels, and then uh, wound it in just a touch for the, for the side panels that are hanging bolted on and vertical so obviously on my own car I was able to make it look flat but on these cars I've pretty much got a um, OEM finish that I've got to try and replicate the manufacturer's orange peel so I was pretty happy with how it came up there we go for a top up of clear as I said I just started leaving this kind of stuff in I think yeah from what I can tell you guys uh, enjoy it is, is like saying those extra couple of little things. It's the kind of thing I used to just add it out, cut that out, and then I'd come straight back in the painting, but... Got a couple of links to a couple of my other vids. I've actually got the Sardajet RP review and demo at the end of this vid, and also just the uh, this same gun review and demo on it. So check them out if you haven't already seen them. I'm going to be doing more uh, gun reviews in the future too. I've just been in contact with the head of Devilbus Australia. He's going to be sending out a Devilbus GDI Pro Light for me. So I might start using that a bit more often and doing some reviews and demos on it.
I'm, he's actually coming in to have a chat to me next week, so looking forward to that. I think uh, the the Pro Light is what we call them in Australia. I'm pretty sure in America it's called the Tenka or the Tecna Tenka Light. It's just a different name for exactly the same gun there in the States. So if you ever hear me the, referring to it as Pro Light, that's, that's, that's what I mean, the Tenka. I've actually noticed that uh, America is actually a, a big part of my viewer base. Uh, we've got about 50% uh, of my viewers are American. So. So yeah, unfortunately, um, yep, we, we, we cut out of part of this bumper bar and yeah, the first coat of clear, but it's pretty much the same thing both coats. You just go on a touch wetter on your second coat because it's the, the final finish. So for some reason, it just decided to turn off here. And here we go with those couple of links to those other vids. Thanks again for watching and this has been another Gunman production. Goodbye.